Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host. For this episode, got a few more news stories today. I'm in the studio, so let me get right into some of the new EV announcements and things that are worthy to follow. Thanks very much for joining me. Let me get right into it. First story I'm going to talk about is Lucid. Now, they've, uh, of course, launched the deliveries of the Lucid Air, but there was some testing that was done by uh, Tom Mullaney at Inside EVs. He's a great guy. I follow him and watch him a lot. He did some, uh, got the first DC fast charging of the new Lucid Air. So he tested it on Electrify America DC fast charging station, and he was able to get the Lucid Air to charge faster than the Tesla Model S or the Porsche Taycan. So he had the Lucid Air Dream Edition, and it went from 0 to 80% in 37 minutes and took 45 minutes to get from 80% to 100%. Now, in a first for an EV, the Lucid peaked at over 300 kilowatt during the test. This allowed the Lucid Air Dream Edition to charge its battery pack to 50 kilowatt hours in 11 minutes. Now, in comparison, the Tesla Model S took 15 minutes to reach uh, 50 kilowatt hours, while the Porsche Taycan took 23 minutes to hit the same benchmark. Now, the Lucid numbers are not actually a surprise, as Lucid does quote 300 miles of charging in 20 minutes, and the results suggest that this number is accurate. Now, the full range of the Lucid Air Dream Edition is 520 miles, or 836 kilometers. Very, very long. But the fact that they can get more than half of that in 20 minutes is very impressive. Now remember that this test was done on an ultra-fast DC charging station that supports 350 kilowatts of charging power, so an air owner would need to find one of these, which can be challenging as these networks are still ramping up in installations, especially here in North America. Now, however, these are great features of the Lucid Air, and it shows what the future of charging can hold for potential EV owners. All right, let me switch gears to Polestar. They've announced their precept concept, or the concept that they had announced. They've now said it's going to become the Polestar 5, and they're going to uh, start producing that vehicle in 2024 at some point. Now, this vehicle, the Polestar 5, will be a four-door sedan with a hatchback in the rear. The company notes uh, the vehicle is an electric performance four-door grand touring car. Now, although Polestar did not release the pricing, many expect the car to compete with the Tesla Model S, the Mercedes-Benz EQS, and the Lucid Air, so it should be fairly pricey. Naturally, Polestar did not release any other crucial specs, including battery size, range, motor configurations, and so on. However, these numbers should come in probably either next year or in 2023. Finally, Polestar teased a deeper integration with Android Auto for this vehicle. Uh, That's what they run today. Features include the sedan recognizing the driver, approaching the car, and changing the settings. Hmm, That would be interesting. Maybe a little scary. In addition, the Google Assistant would see improvement with more languages and voice assistants uh, able to have more natural conversations because they do tend to be kind of robotic sounding. And finally, uh, they are also looking to improve the in-car experience, including better video streaming. Polestar has released two vehicles already, the Polestar 1, which is the uh, plug-in hybrid, and the Polestar 2, of course, the all-electric. Polestar 3 is an electric crossover SUV, which it will be coming, uh, no surprise, and many expect the Polestar 4 to be an SUV. So wait and see, but good to see Polestar continuing with their EV ramp-up. Talk about Kia, uh, you know, a lot of folks know I really, really like the South Korean manufacturers for what they offer, both Kia and Hyundai. Well, uh, Kia announced a new Nero in 2022 at the Seoul Mobility Show that happened last month. Um, it's a new generation of the Nero, which will go on sale next year as a hybrid, a plug-in hybrid, and an all-electric battery model, of course. The focus on the presentation that they did was on the com- completely a new design. Kia has not yet revealed whether there will be any change to the powertrain. Now the first generation of the Nero, and remember it came out in 2016, was offered exclusively with alternative powertrains. So the compact crossover used the powertrain from a Hyundai Ionic sedan for the hybrid and the plug-in hybrid models. However, the uh, battery electric version, or the all-electric e-Nero, which has been offered since 2018, did not take over the drive from the Ionic Electric, but both options from the Kona Electric, because they use the similar components. In other words, 100 kilowatt of power with a 39.2 kilowatt battery, or 150 kilowatts with a 64 kilowatt hour battery that was offered. 
Now, it's not yet known whether Hyundai will uh, also bring a new generation of the Ionic sedan with the different drive types, uh, but there is uh, therefore a question mark over the drives in the now presented Kia Nero for the 2022. We don't know what they're going to offer. It is also clear that the design has evolved, as you can see by the pictures and video. The second generation presented in Seoul has shed the somewhat conservative look and follows the current and more expressive Kia design philosophy called Opposites United. In the interior, the new Nero picks up numerous elements from the EV6 uh, EGMP-based model. Uh, for example, the pictures show the steering wheel with two spokes or displays, including the bar for the climate and infotainment controls that are familiar from the EV6. The center console, including the gear selector, follows the same design line, but it is designed as a continuous center console in the Nero. Now, more information will follow next year, I'm sure, earlier next year. And I know that this redesign will be a big hit because that look is really, really cool. And as the Nero EV has done very well overall for Kia. Uh, and if you remember, folks, it was my first EV pick of the year when I started doing that for 2019. A very solid machine. So stay tuned for more. And congratulations, Kia, for updating the Nero. Now, staying within the same families of sort of the Hyundai Motor Group, Genesis premiered the electrified GV70 at the Auto Guangzhou show uh, recently. Um, and it's built on the heritage of the GV70, and it's it's basically inherits the predecessor's spacious interior and adding outstanding performance and a host of new technologies designed exclusively exclusively, excuse me, for electric vehicles. The design displays a careful consideration for aerodynamic efficiency and function, and it does include Genesis's signature crest grille. The interior boasts a driver-focused design, offering an intuitive and dynamic driving experience. Now, For the powertrain, it will be available only as an all-wheel drive model, and details on output and performance for North American models will be available closer to the launch. More information on North American market specs and deliveries will be available at a later date, so keep watching for more information. It's a really nice looking vehicle. I mean, Genesis has a beautiful design language. They've got really good people there, and I'm sure that it's going to be built with the high quality fit and finish that they offer. So congratulations to, to them for their first step into the all electric arena. And my last story is a big one. It's from Nissan. We finally get some more updates from them. Remember, they're one of the pioneers of the all electric vehicle movement, and they've been a bit slow in updating their future plans. Well, they just announced last week that they are accelerating their electrification plans with an investment of 17.6 billion US over the next five years as part of their now unveiled, quote, Ambition 2030 strategic plan. This plan includes 23 new electri uh, electrified models by 2030, which 15 will be pure electric models and aims for an electrification mix of more than 50% globally across the Nissan and Infiniti brands. The vision uh, also supports Nissan's goal to be carbon neutral across the life cycle of its products by fiscal year 2050. Nissan intends to increase its electrification sales mix across major markets by fiscal year 2026, including Europe by more than 75% of sales, Japan by more than 55% of sales, China more than 40% of sales, and the United States by 40% of EV sales. They want to have that achieve that number by 2030. Now, to make progress towards this, Nissan will continue to evolve its lithium-ion battery technologies and introduce cobalt-free technology to bring down the cost by 65%, hopefully by fiscal year 2028. Nissan also aims to launch an EV with its proprietary all-solid-state battery, or ASSB, by fiscal year 2028. They say by reducing charging time to one-third, ASSBs will make EVs more efficient, and accessible. Further, Nissan expects ASSB to bring the cost of the battery packs down to $75, kilowatts, uh, $75 per kilowatt hour by fiscal year 2028 and aims to bring it further down to $65, these are US numbers, per kilowatt hour to achieve cost parity between EV and gasoline vehicles in the future. So they're still pushing it out a little bit. Now to meet these goals, Nissan intends to increase its global battery production capacity to 52 gigawatt hours by fiscal year 2026 and uh, 130 gigawatt hours by fiscal year 2030. 
The company also unveiled four new concept vehicles in this announcement as their next stage of Nissan's electrified future. And they are named the Nissan Chillout, the Hangout, the Max Out, and the Surf Out. Hopefully when they come out, they'll be all sold out, but let's move forward. Now the Chill Out is a crossover concept that utilizes the CMF EV platform, which is current available today. It features a sleek and modern design, advanced safety technology, and a productive and comfortable interior space. The Chill Out does bear a certain relation to the current models. Of course, got that similar design language. The Hangout uh, is a really cool concept. It's designed to change the perception of the mobile living space. With a completely flat floor that extends from the front to the back, the Hangout concept aims to surpass the conventional wisdom about interior layouts. It is designed to suppress vibrations and jolts, thereby reducing instances of motion sickness and inner, uh, interference while working on the go. Its spaciousness and quietness offers the comfort of your living room in a mobile space, expanding creature comforts on the go and off the beaten path. The theater-like seating makes on-the-go movie nights with family and friends new and fresh, no matter where you are or are going. Now, the Max Out concept is a convertible that aims to deliver a new driving experience with its superlative stability and comfort. Dynamic cornering and steering response are balanced with limited body roll to optimize driver and passenger comfort, creating a feeling of openness with the car. The two-seater features the unique ability to morph the seating, flattening it to the floor to offer more interior space when desired, making it ideal for drivers with and without passengers. No ejection seat, though. And finally, the Surf Out concept aims to provide a smooth ride regardless of the terrain, enabling customers to go anywhere in comfort and with confidence. The vehicle's a variety of power outputs and uh, low and flat cargo space are aimed to help owners go wherever they want and amplify their experience when they get there. It offers off-road performance and extended cargo space. Now, underpinning three of these new concept vehicles uh, is Nissan's EV technology vision. And this technology vision is a technology study that looks beyond the area and the next generation crossover EV and considers the direction of future EVs and how advancements in battery technology, hardware, and packaging can offer customers a much wider variety of mobility solutions to match their needs and lifestyles. Now, folks, this was a big announcement by Nissan, which was, of course, again, long overdue, uh, in sharing their strategic plan for this decade and beyond. Now, like many of the other OEMs I've reported on, it is great to see Nissan step up their electrification efforts as they have somewhat slumped over the last few years compared to the majority of the mainstream markets. For more information on this, you can check out Nissan's website, and I do look forward to seeing more electric vehicles coming from them very, very soon. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Hope you enjoyed those stories and learned a few things. Again, really super stoked to see Nissan step up and uh, keep watching what they're doing. Thanks if you were following me on YouTube. Uh, appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed, maybe think about doing so. You can also click that bell to get notified of new episodes. Thanks very much. Always enjoy and welcome comments. Please send them in. You For Patreon supporters, you know who you are. I'm always humbled. Thank you very much. Your names are on each and every episode. If you're interested in more information about maybe supporting me on Patreon, you can check out the link below. Again, everybody stay safe. We're still going through a bit of a crazy world as, uh, as things continue to change uh, dynamically. So keep uh, safe and uh, use your common sense out there, folks. Appreciate you following the EV landscape and watching me. And until the next show, again, everybody stay safe. All the best. And I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.